Hey there, fellow grad students. Test coming up on personality disorders. Do you need to know about the weird cluster A, wild cluster B, and the worry cluster C group? Well, I have 24 practice questions to get you ready for your upcoming test. Ready? Let's learn psych fast. All right, question one. A 45-year-old eccentrically dressed librarian was admitted to the acute medical ward after an overdose. Whilst taking her history, she tells you she has a few friends other than family, however, appears to find this quite amusing. She informs you that she knows aliens exist because, as a child, she came across some unusual marks on the ground. She also states she has a sixth sense and can tell when bad demons are around, as well as being able to read others' thoughts. She tells you that her doctor thinks she has a personality disorder, but uh, she doesn't agree with that. What is her most likely diagnosis? Is it A, schizophrenia, B, schizoid personality disorder, C, schizotypical personality disorder, D, paranoid PD, E, histronic PD? The answer is C, schizoid typical personality disorder. So patients with this condition can have odd eccentric beliefs or behaviors. For example, the belief around the existence of aliens. They often express magical thinking such as a sixth sense or telepathy and can have ideas of reference. They can struggle to make friends and can be paranoid or suspicious. Patients may also show inappropriate affect such as finding it amusing that she had few friends when most would find this sad. So I've included a mnemonic for you and I'm going to include mnemonics throughout this. This one is for schizoid typical. So you just think of that UFO evader. Also, remember that movie with Giant Depp in it, huh? So there's the unusual perceptions. There's They're friendless except for family. Odd beliefs in thinking and speech. Their affect, it's inappropriate, it is constricted, have ideas of reference, doubts of others. They're eccentric, and they'll dress eccentrically too. They're reluctant in social situations and can appear anxious. Question two. A 21-year-old female with paranoid schizophrenia is currently being treated on an antipsychotic regimen as an inpatient. Recently, she started to complain of breast tenderness and enlargement. Given that current antipsychotic regimen is not being tolerated well, what is the best antipsychotic for her to be started on to reduce these side effects? Is it A, risperidone, B, clorazepine, C, aripiprazole, or D, halipuridol? The answer is C, aripiprazole. Aripiprazole has the most tolerable side effect profile of the atypical antipsychotics, particularly for procalcitonin elevation. Nearly all typical and some atypical antipsychotics like risperidone cause hyperprolactosemia. Effects of hyperprolactosemia can involve breast tenderness, breast enlargement, and lactation. Aripiprazole is known for its having fewer side effects, especially with respect to procalcitonin elevation. Question 3. A 27-year-old female presents to the ED feeling suicidal after a breakdown of her relationship two weeks ago. She reports being fearful of being on her own as he made all the major decisions in their relationships and she is not capable of making correct choices. She has not tried online dating since her relationship broke up, but despite multiple dates, has not found a new partner. She advises you she was previously diagnosed with a personality disorder. What is most likely the diagnosis? Borderline PD, paranoid PD, narcissist PD, or dependent PD? The answer is dependent personality disorder. Patients with dependent personality disorder require excessive reassurance from others, seek out relationships, and require others to take responsibility for major life decisions. The correct answer is dependent personality disorder. The patient is in question is struggling to cope after a breakdown of a relationship. Patients with PD struggle to make everyday life decisions and require reassurance and support from others. They feel they are unable to look after themselves and become fearful when left to do so. As in this patient whose relationship only broke down two weeks ago, but has already been on multiple dates, 
They cope best when in a relationship and urgently seek out new relationships if one fails. They will often passively comply with the wishes of others. I've included another mnemonic, and this one then would be for a dependent personality disorder. And you say, darn hurt. You just think about when they break up, you say, darn, that hurt. D for disagreement is difficult to express. A for advice needs excessive input. R for responsibility for major area delegated to others. N, nurturance, they seek excessive degree from others. H is helpless when alone. U, unrealistic and the preoccupied with being left to care for self. R, relationships are desperately sought out, especially when one ends. And T, tasks, they have difficulty initiating projects. Question four. A 25-year-old female patient is being investigated for a personality disorder. She has low self-esteem and is fearful of criticism or rejection, particularly in social situations. She states she struggles making friends at work despite being desperate to be liked. She feels that her colleagues are much better at their job than her. She becomes very anxious every day on her way to work as she worries she'll make a fool of herself. As a result, she struggles to hold down a job, often changing jobs regularly. She has the same experience with relationships out of work as she does not feel good enough for anyone. What is the most likely diagnosis? Is it A, dependent PD, B, paranoid PD, C, borderline, D, hysteronic, or E, avoidant PD? The answer is E, avoidant PD. Patients with avoidant personality disorder are fearful of criticism, being unliked, rejection, and ridicule. Those with APD tend to avoid social contact, relationships, due to fear of being criticized, rejected, or embarrassed. They view themselves as inferior to others and so are not keen to be involved unless they are certain of being liked. They sometimes have an overwhelming sense of tension or apprehension. All right, to help you out, here's another mnemonic. So what is the big thing about avoided personality disorder? Ridicule. They want to avoid this. So remember this mnemonic, R for restrained with relationships, I inhibited in interpersonal situations, D for disapproval expected at work, I inadequate view of self, C criticism is expected in social situations, unwillingly to get involved, L longs for attachment to others, E for embarrassment as being the feared emotion of them. Question 5. The sister of a 32-year-old man comes to see you in the clinic as she is worried her brother may have a personality disorder. She reports her brother has always had a heightened opinion of himself and often expresses delusional thoughts regarding his potential for success as a banker, believing he is capable of making millions of dollars. He does not seem to be perturbed by bringing others down in the process and appears pleased when he talks of others' failures. She remembers he behaved similarly when they were growing up and was unsympathetic towards her when she had to resit for her finals due to an illness. What personality is she describing? Is it antisocial personality disorder, schizoid PD, schizotypical PD, borderline PD, or narcissistic PD? The answer is E, narcissistic personality disorder. Whilst her brother may not actually actually qualify for having a personality disorder if his behavior does not cause him personal distress or prevent him from functioning socially, many of these features are seen in narcissistic behavior. These patients have a heightened impression of self-importance and entitlement, often believing that they have ultimately these patients have heightened impression of self-importance and entitlement, often believing they have unlimited abilities to succeed, become powerful, or look beautiful. Additionally, they lack empathy and will happily take advantage of others to achieve their own need. In keeping with many personality disorders, his symptoms appear to have been present since childhood and into adulthood. So once again, I've made a mnemonic for you. This one's going to be for, of course, the person narcissistic PD that we're talking about. So what mnemonic we're going to use is a fame game. A for admiration required in excessive amounts. F 
fantasizes about unlimited success and brilliance. A is for arrogant. M for manipulative. E for envious of others. G, they have that grandiose, that sense of importance. A, associates with special people. Um, me, if they are a me first attitude. And E, empathy, lack, they lack empathy for others. Question six. A 31-year-old woman is brought in by her husband. She has been refusing to go outside for the past three months, telling her husband she's afraid of catching avian flu. On exploring this further, she is concerned due to a high number of migrating birds she can see in her garden. She reports that the presence of her husband's socks on the washing line in the garden have alerted her to this. What is the most likely diagnosis? Is it A, depression? B, hypochondrial disorder? C, formal thought disorder? D, borderline personality disorder? Or E, acute paranoid schizophrenia? The answer is E, acute paranoid schizophrenia. The wash and line comment is an example of a delusional perception. Question seven, what is the most common personality disorder cluster? Is it cluster A, cluster B, that dramatic erratic person that might have antisocial PD or borderline PD? Or is it cluster C, that anxious type, uh, like avoidant PD, obsessive compulsive PD? Or is it D, all of them have about the same prevalence. The answer is cluster A, that is centric one, paranoid, the schizotypical. So personality disorders in cluster A are the most common. They are approximately 30% more prevalent than cluster C disorders and more than twice as common as cluster B disorders. Question eight, which personality disorder is most associated with low resting pulse and low skin conductance? Schizotypical, borderline, antisocial, or paranoid? The answer is antisocial. You know, there's been some studies that have shown that some personality disorders are associated with unique physiological differences. Patients with antisocial disorder tend to have a low resting pulse and low skin conductance, while patients with schizotypical, paranoid, and borderline personalities show abnormal neurobiology. Specifically, Patients with paranoid personality disorders show altered amygdala function, while schizotypical personality disorder is associated with a volumetric decrease in the frontal lobe. Further, patients with borderline personality disorder have a significant decrease in responsiveness in the midline of the prefrontal cortex. Question 9. Patients with personality disorders in which cluster most likely benefit from group therapy? Is it cluster A, B, C, or is it both cluster A and C that actually would benefit from group therapy? The answer is B. Cluster B personality disorder would benefit from it. They'd also benefit from from individual therapy. Individual social skills training may be most useful for patients with a cluster A personality as their distrustful and suspicious nature may be a disadvantage in group therapy settings. Cognitive behavioral therapy, along with selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor medications, can be effective for a range of cluster C personality disorders. Question 10. Which personality disorder is most common in men? Hysteronic, borderline, dependent, or antisocial? The answer is D, antisocial. Antisocial personality disorder is most common in men, while borderline, hysteronic, and dependent personality disorders are more common in women. Male sex is a specific risk factor for any personality disorder. The answer is D, antisocial personality disorder is most common in men, while borderline, hysteronic, and dependent personality disorders are more common in women. Male sex is a specific risk factor for any personality disorder. However, along with younger age, unmarital status, lower education, and lower socioeconomic status. Question 11. What is the appropriate overall worldwide prevalence of personality disorder? 3%, 6%, 9%, or 12%? The answer is B, 6%. The overall worldwide prevalence of personality disorder is 6.1%, with 3.6% in cluster A, 1.5% in cluster B, and 2.7% in cluster C. 
This proportion increases into about 30% in the psychiatric population, even higher in the incarcerated population. Protective factors include marriage, employment, and higher education. Question 12. Which personality disorder is most similar to narcissistic personality disorder, NPD? Is it A, hysteronic, B, borderline, C, obsessive-compulsive disorder, or D, antisocial? The answer is D, antisocial personality disorder. Narcissistic PD is most similar to antisocial PD because of the lack of empathy and superficial charm exhibited by the person. People with antisocial PD demonstrate a lack of morals when compared to those with NPD, and usually they have a past diagnosis of a conduct disorder. Here's another mnemonic, this time for antisocial personality disorder. Think of this callous man. A callous man has, is antisocial. C for conduct disorder that occurs before the age of 15. C can also be for the current age to be at least 18 years of age. A for antisocial acts. L for lies frequently. L for lacunae or that lack of superego. U, unstable, can't plan ahead. S is for safety of self and others are ignored. M for money problems, you know, spouse and children are not supported. A is for aggressive, assaultive. N, not occurring exclusively during a schizophrenia or mania. Question 13. How many subtypes of NPD are recognized? Two, three, four, or five? The answer is three. Research has identified three subtypes typical of narcissist's personality disorder. They are grandiose, oblivious, two, the vulnerable, hypervigilant, sometimes called fragile type, and three, the high-function subtype. Diagnosis of NPD has been controversial for many years, but core characteristics include a need for admiration from others, a grandiose manner of relating, and a lack of empathy. People with the grandiose, oblivious subtype exhibit an exaggerated sense of self, importance, a lack of remorse, manipulativeness in their relationships, anger, and a pursuit of power and privilege. Those with the vulnerable, hypervigilant subtype, you know, they can be extremely shy and are prone to shame and hurt feelings as well as believe that they have been, they have suffered more than others. The high functioning subtype, well, that's the most difficult to diagnose because they appear to be congenial, articulate, and outgoing. Question 14. Which is most accurate regarding the risk of suicide in individuals with NPD? NPD? They are less likely than those with other personality disorders to attempt suicide because they have a high self-esteem. Or B. They are at high risk for completed suicide without warning signs or self-disclosure. The answer is B. They are at high risk for completed suicides without warning signs or self-disclosure. People with NDP are at high risk for comp complete suicide or lethal attempts without warning. The factors that lead to suicide among those with NPD are not well understood. The desire to kill oneself can arise without the presence of a depression. In fact, suicidal thoughts may stem from a person's need to regulate self-esteem or protect a self-image of perfection. Suicidal thoughts can also be brought on by intense feelings of shame, where suicide seems to be the only option because the person seems sees himself or herself as irreparable. Question 15. Although no medications are approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for the treatment of NPD, which medication can control certain manifestations, though? Is it A, chlorodiazepoxide, B, topramate, C, risperidone, or D, methadone? The answer is C, risperidone. Although no medications are FDA-approved, some medications can be used off-label to treat the symptoms of NPD. Antidepressants such as SSRIs or SNRIs, antipsychotics such as risperidone, and mood stabilizers such as lamotrigine have been given to patients with NPD. These medications target specific symptoms of depression, anxiety, mood lability, transient psychosis, and impulse control. 
Question 16. Fact or fiction? Countertransferase is less of a risk for therapists treating patients with NPD. Fact or fiction? This is certainly fiction. Countertransference is a risk throughout the treatment process in patients with NDP. It is recommended that practitioners have a consultant with whom they can regularly speak about their feelings, especially when they feel that they are being devalued or ignored by the patient. Question 17. Which of these often exacerbate many borderline personality symptoms? A. Perception of abandonment. B. Interpersonal stressors, C, perception of rejection, or D, all of the above? The answer is all of the above. Most BPT symptoms include a psychosis, often are exacerbated by the perception of abandonment or rejection, and other interpersonal stressors. Question 18. Which of these are symptoms of borderline personality disorder? A. Auditory hallucinations, D, dissociative symptoms, or C, A and B? The answer is A and B. So with borderline personality disorder, the symptoms can include a variety of things such as transient stress-related disorder, auditory hallucinations, which are predominantly negative and critical in tone. There's a presence of disassociative symptoms. There's a reduction of psychosis or a long-term course. And there's increased psychotic symptoms in response to interpersonal stress. Question 19. True or false? Any psychotic dosages used to treat hallucinations and primary psychotic disorders are likely to be effective for patients with B, B, PT. True or false? False. Antipsychotic dosages used to treat hallucinations in primary psychotic disorders are unlikely to be effective for a patient with borderline personality disorder. Question 20. Which of these are suggested when treating psychosis in borderline personality disorder? A. Using multiple concurrent antipsychotics. B. Emphasize psychotherapy as the treatment of choice. C. Focusing on reducing distress, D, A and C, or E, B and C? The answer is E, B and C. When treating psychosis and borderline personality disorder, evidence is limited for antipsychotic reducing to psychotic symptoms. If prescribing antipsychotics, use a lower dosage. Avoid using multiple concurrent psychotics. Avoid statements that imply psychotic symptoms are not real. Emphasize psychotherapy as a treatment of choice and medications as adjunctive. Focus on reducing distress and improving ability to cope. Question 21. True or false? Disassociative identity disorder is commonly characterized by the presence of two or more distinct identities. True or false? True. Disassociative identity disorder is characterized by the individual presenting with greater than two distinct identities or personalities states. Question 22. In the U.S., what was the average length of psychiatric hospitalization of a patient with borderline personality disorder? A. 3 to 5 days. B. 5 to 7. Or C. 7 to 14 days. In the United States, the average length of stay for patients with BPT was 5 to 7 days. Question 23. Severe trauma in early childhood is strongly linked to dissociative identity disorder with blank of child and adult cases reporting such trauma. What is a blank? Is it A, 25 to 37%, B, 55 to 73%, C, 85 to 97%? The answer is C, 85 to 97%. The rates of reported severe childhood trauma for child and adult patients with disassociative identity disorder range from 85 to 97% of cases. Frequently, physical and sexual abuses are the most reported sources of childhood trauma. Last question. Question 24. True or false? 
Individuals with disassociative identity disorder commonly experience obsessive compulsive personality traits. True or false? The answer is true. OCD personality traits are commonly in disassociative identity disorder and intercurrent obsessive compulsive disorder symptoms are regularly found in patients with disassociative identity disorder. All right, well, thanks so much for studying with us. I really hope that you found this very helpful for your unit that you're studying on personality disorders. I hope you do really well on your test. Uh, if this has helped you, please like this video and share it with a classmate. Thanks. See you at the next video.